Welcome back. The Kenyan Finance Ministry has projected that the country's economic growth will slow to 3% or less this year from an earlier forecast of about 6% due to the effects of the coronavirus. Now, according to the U.S.-based John Hopkins Resource Center, Kenya has so far reported 172 infected cases with six deaths. And the government has partially locked down the capital Nairobi and the coastal cities of Mombasa, Kalifi and Kuala for three weeks. Well, let's talk to the CEO of Coal Street Research and Analytics, George Bodo, to know more about the situation in Kenya. Good afternoon, Mr. Bodo. Well, let's start with what the situation is like in Kenya with the lockdown into parts of the country due to, uh, to curtail the spread of coronavirus. Good afternoon. So we are on a partial lockdown. What it means is that um, uh, people staying in the, in the COVID-19 epicenters uh, cannot move in or out. So to be specific, people in Nairobi, the capital city, uh, they have latest uh, uh, directive is that you can't move out, neither can anyone come into the capital city. Uh, beyond the capital city, there's also a small towns on the coast, which is in Mombasa and Cliffy, which are also minor epicenters. Also, you can't get in and you can't come out of those uh, those towns. So that's the latest um, uh, directive that from the president. On top of that, we also have a nationwide curfew uh, whereby activities can only be uh, from 5 a.m. and end at 7 p.m. Between 7 p.m. and 5 a.m., nobody is expected to be outside except for pre-approved uh, movements, such as distribution of food and health, uh, health emergencies. Well, many are calling for a complete lockdown in the country, but the president of Hurricane Yata says that doing so will mean depriving a sizable number of the population from feeding. But are there any measures in place to take care of these people if the need truly arises for a complete lockdown? Well, I think there are no measures, essentially. Um, in, in Kenya, you're talking about um, an unemployed population of about 18 million. And out of that 18 million, only 3 million are in the formal sector. So you look at about 15 million people or, or household, if you want, that are earning, they are earning living from doing informal activities. So essentially, if you lock down, uh, if you have a complete lockdown, you have to have a way of feeding these people. And so far, unfortunately, the government has not unveiled any measures to feed up to 15 million households in case there's a, a complete lockdown. Many thanks, Mr. George Bodo, CEO, Coal Street Research and Analytics. Thank you for sharing your thoughts with us. Thank you. We turn now to Uganda, where the government has asked farmers to start planting to ensure food security, even if new local swarms could destroy the crops as supplies needed to fight the pest that diverted to curb in the COVID-19 outbreak. The agriculture minister says farmers are encouraged to take advantage of recent rains and plant crops to avert a possible food crisis. According to the minister, the delivery of 8,600 litters, litters of pesticides from Japan has been delayed due to virus-related challenges. Countries from Uganda to Kenya, Somalia and Ethiopia are battling the worst desert locust invasion in decades a crisis exacerbated by the coronavirus emergency that has restricted air travel to slow transmission of the virus. The World Bank has approved the $140 million financing from the International Development Association to improve the quality of teaching and learning in Niger. The Niger Learning Improvement for Results in Education project will focus on vulnerable and fragile regions of the country and scale up distance learning programs in the context of the COVID-19 crisis. The project is expected to help manage the impact of COVID-19 on the education sector and other key sectors, as well as address the socio-economic impact of the global pandemic. The project is financed by a $120 million grant and a $20 million credit from the IDA, including resources from the IDA risk mitigation regime and the IDA sub-window for refugees and host communities. The South Africa's debt-stricken power company, Eskom Holdings, says it currently doesn't need to approach the government for more support, even as a COVID-19-related national shutdown slashes revenue. According to Eskom's management, the company needs to raise 89 billion rand, or $4.9 billion this year. 
and 56 billion rand of that income will come from an existing state bailout. The executives say the company could withstand a few more weeks of a lockdown if it was extended. An estimated revenue loss of 4 billion rand is anticipated for the three-week lockdown that began on March the 26th. Meanwhile, yields on Eskom's dollar bond stayed lower after dropping earlier for the first time in eight trading days amid a resurgence of global risk appetite. The company's $1.25 billion of 2025 securities gained 1.8 percent to 70.3 cents on the dollar, driving the yield down 48 basis points to 16.22 percent. Let's talk about gold prices now. They actually gained in volatile trading on Wednesday amid a weakening appetite for risk and rising debt dampened hope for a swift containment of the novel coronavirus. Spot gold ticked up 0.2% to $1,651.51 an ounce after climbing to its highest since March the 10th on Tuesday. U.S. gold futures rose 0.4% to $1,689.80 an ounce. Palladium gained 1.2% to $2,261 an ounce, while platinum gained 0.7% to $738.84. Silver rose 0.4%, having touched a more than three-week high the previous session. And that's where we end today's program. Thank you for watching. I am BC Adebayo.